Hello, 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 queens, coaches, powerful feminine leaders who are called to make a difference. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Million Stars show today. It's Tuesday. So you know what we do on Tuesdays. We show up with lots of amazing, amazing content. Good morning, Jacqueline. Good morning, gorgeous people that are here. And I want to say hello. I'll pull your name up. Here we go. Yes, Jacqueline. Good morning. Now, if you don't give StreamYard permission to show your name, then I don't know who you are. And it looks like this. It just looks like Facebook user. Hello, Queens. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Janine is here. Hello, hello, hello. Faria is here. Hello. Awesome, awesome, awesome. As our queens pull up, come and say hello to me. Tell me what's happening in your world. How is the weather where you are? I always want to know that. And Nadia Anderson is here. Some more people are here. Shakira is here. Hello, hello, hello. Shiam is here. Fantastic. Oh my God. It is so good to be here. I am glowing. Yeah, I got some makeup on today. Um, wow, it's been a while and it is so nice to be here. I am so honored to be here. We got an amazing topic today. We are going to talk about how to say no. Oh my God. This topic, you know, well, it is very close to my heart because I am a former people pleaser. Okay. And people pleasing is a disease. Yes, make sure you tag your friends, tag your people, tag your accountability partners, tag people, because I'll tell you, people pleasing is a disease that actually affects women more than men. Yes, they are men who are affected by this. Oh, thank you so much, Fadia. I even put my earrings on for you. Look at this. Yeah, today I put my earrings on. Oh, my goodness. Sunny day in Cape Town, but I think it was raining this morning. Okay. Okay, got it, got it. We are actually um, going into spring here in Toronto, and uh, it is wet, 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 because I think that, you know, I think the Almighty just sends us the rain to clean the atmosphere and clean all of this so we can get ready for summer as we wash away the snow and the sleet and the ice and all those things that are happening when people walk their dogs in winter they don't pick up the you know what i don't want to talk about that but spring just cleans all of that away and the rain comes and we get ready for a beautiful beautiful summer okay awesome awesome so now let's talk about this whole thing with no okay saying no Saying no actually brings up a lot of things. So I want to ask you, you know, how is it for you when someone comes to you and says, you know, um, can I borrow some money or can you pick up my child from school or can you we're having a potluck? Can you cook the meal? And you know, you don't have the time, you know, you're unable to do this and can you say no? How do you feel when you say no? You know, what happens to you inside of you when there's a request made, you know, from a client, from a child, from a family member, from a friend, from a neighbor, from a boss, and you know, you want to say no. You know, it's hard to say no to that, says Nadia. Yeah, I get that. I get that because I have been that people pleasing person. I have been, you know, I was raised to be the good girl. I am the eldest in my family, in my siblings. And it was my responsibility as a child to look after my youngest siblings that they don't, you know, make a noise or they don't carry on or, you know, all of those other things. And my parents would say, like, you know, you have to look after them. You have to make sure that they're okay. And so saying no was not part of my psyche in any way. In fact, I created this whole thing in my head saying, if I said no, I was going to disappoint someone. If I said no, I was going to hurt my parents. I was a bad girl. I wasn't a good girl. 
right? And so when we grow up with these kind of patterns and programs that you have to say yes because you have to respect your elders, then guess what happens when we grow up? We become teenagers in high school. We don't know how to say no. We become young adults. We don't know how to say no. You get into relationships and marriages. You still don't know how to say no. And then you become a business owner or you get a job somewhere. You still don't know how to say no because in your mind, you have created a meaning. So what does that meaning look like to you? What does no mean when you think, oh, I got to say no to someone, right? Imagine saying no to our parents at a young age. Oh, yeah, you would just get flipped out, right? You, they would get annoyed and they would get upset and you'd get a long speech or you would get punished. And so now it's time for you to help that inner child, the inner child inside of you that learned the initial programming to grow up, to grow up and to say, we're not those little kids anymore. We're adults. We've had relationships. We have a credit card. We drive a car, right? And you're still using the same model. You're still using the same program where you haven't learned how to create healthy boundaries. Trust me, I can talk about the subject because I have been there. I have been there. It took me more than, you know, 45 years to learn the concept of what a healthy boundary looks like. Healthy boundaries are the limits that we set for ourselves that determine, do I want to participate in? Do I want to do this? Do I want to remove myself? They dictate our choices and our values. Now, when we keep on saying yes to other people, we never really learn who we are. We never really learn what we like and what we want. All we're doing is running around with chickens without our heads, pleasing other people because we do not want to deal with the repercussions of, you know what? If I say no, like imagine right now, put yourself in the situation and say, okay, so-and-so has made a request from me. So-and-so is here. This is this person in my life. If I say no to them, what is the repercussions? If I say no to them, what is going to happen to that relationship? Okay. If I say no to them, how are they going to react? And when they react a certain way, how am I going to be? Okay. Most of the women that are people pleasers are actually empaths. Okay. So I want you to really listen to this carefully. You are an empath. So an empath is a person who has strong empathetic abilities where you know how that other person is feeling and you also know the repercussions of what will happen if you say a certain thing you are so in tune to other people's emotions you can read the room you know how everyone is feeling and because you grew up in an environment like that you can pick up a change in emotion and a change in the atmosphere and the vibe. And what do you do? You are a master at changing your behavior, changing your language, changing your actions to mimic what's happening in the room because you want to keep the peace. Yes, you are a peacemaker. You are someone that everybody knows if they call you, they they, they want something done, you are the person who will get it done. It doesn't matter what's on your plate. It doesn't matter how much work you've do, you're doing. It doesn't matter how busy you are or you have guests coming or you're raising a family or you're busy in school or you're doing your job or you're building a business, you will get that done. So they count on you for that and you don't say no. You always say yes because that's who you are. And so it is okay to relearn a new behavior. It is okay to give yourself permission to upgrade. It is okay for you to say, 
I've been doing this all along and I no longer wish to do it. It is okay. It is okay for you to say, I'm going to do a different thing right now. Okay, so we have a limited amount of energy and time to give, all of us. We're all in that same boat when it comes to time. We, every single day, we have 24 hours. That's it. And in that time, you have to accommodate yourself, your dreams, everyone else. Okay? By not setting healthy boundaries, what you do is you avoid speaking your truth. Yes, you do. Because this hurts our relationships. Let me tell you why. Every time you say yes, when you really want to say no, or even vice versa, you say no when you really want to say yes, right? You're not being honest. You are not being honest because you are not being authentic because what is running you is fear. What is running you is fear of the repercussions of how is this person going to act if I do this? So what do you do? You choose to be inauthentic. I chose to be inauthentic. And what that does by being inauthentic and not being honest, it makes our relationships less intimate. We break that connection. Because when we give too much, we start feeling like our needs are not being met. Okay? Others are not reciprocating because we've never trained other people for our needs. We've never trained other people on what we want because we've been so busy giving and people pleasing. Okay. When other people do not reciprocate, let me tell you what's going to happen. You become frustrated inside of you, right? So yourself is now saying, and you're not speaking the truth. And what is being built in not speaking your truth and keep on people pleasing, you're now getting tired, you're exhausted, you don't know why you're so tired, and then resentment starts building. And resentments will fester. Resentments will fester because you're not addressing it, you're not talking about it, you're staying silent. And now you're creating a bigger wedge because nothing has changed and Now, what are you saying? I don't want to be around that person. I want to avoid this person. And your relationship starts to suffer because there was no real communication. It was this person tells you to do something or makes a request and you're doing it because you want them in your life and you want to people please, right? Saying no is a really important boundary because it gives you control over what? Over your time and your energy. Okay, it is not possible to feel close to someone when you can't be open, you can't be transparent, you can't be vulnerable because intimacy, right? Connection starts with authenticity, it doesn't start with pretending. All my life, for the first 45 years of my life, I was pretending, I was pretending. So, there's the saying called we go along or we get along to go along. Okay, we get along to go along because I'm just going to say yes because I don't want to rock the boat. I'm just going to say yes because I'm afraid of the repercussions. I'm just going to say yes because I don't want a big fight to happen. We avoid confrontation because we just want everything to be, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, don't worry, right? And then these resentments inside of us that are festering, turn into diseases, turn into toxic diagnoses, right? Whether it's tiredness, whether you can't think properly, whether the doctor's telling you whatever, whether you're eating and finding that comfort in food, okay? Saying no is self-care. Saying no is, isn't selfish or inconsiderate like we were taught as, as children, okay? When self-care gets ignored, your stress level goes up, your cortisol level goes up, right? And you're going to have physical signs. You're going to have a stomach ache or you're going to suffer from headaches or other issues. By not advocating for yourself, you might make yourself sick, right? People crash. 
people burn out, people don't know, you know, what are they doing? And it all comes down to what, how can I set my boundaries for myself? How do I set my boundaries for myself, right? When you think of that fear, so do this little exercise, okay? So there's a certain person who's always asking you to do things. You still want them in your life, but you have had a really hard time saying no. So what do you, what do you want to do? Practice in your mind. Practice in your mind. This person comes in front of you. They're asking a certain question. And now practice. Practice how you're going to say, you know, no. And later on in this uh, in this show, I'm actually going to show you different ways of how you can say no. Okay. But before you do that, go into this mindset, go into this visualization. This person is in front of you. Okay. I'm going to say no. And just practice. Now, think about what that other person is going to do. Guess what? They might get upset or they might say, okay. Or they might say, wow, you're different. You're changed. Okay. The people that really love you, the people that really care about you, the people who want you to succeed, they might get a little bit like, oh, that was different. But then you talk to them and say, you know, you know what I'm doing? I'm actually learning a new thing. I'm learning to say no. I'm learning to say no. Some people are not going to like it. And some people are going to respect you for it, right? If they don't respect you for your choices, have a conversation. Because we are training other people how to treat us all the time. Anytime we're talking, anytime in our behavior, all our actions are training other people how to treat us, right? And so you want to start you want to start practicing because without boundaries guess what i was i was a doormat i was a complete doormat people would wipe their shoes on me all the time because i was so needy i needed to be validated right i needed to be loved i needed people to say oh you're so wonderful i needed people to love me and accept me and you know what? None of that happened. The more I said yes, the more they wanted. The more I was giving, the more they wanted. And then their expectations grew. Until you get to a point where you start saying in your self-talk, it's never enough. And so you hurt yourself because you're saying it's never good enough. It's never good enough. And what that ha what what happens then it affects your self esteem, it affects your confidence, it affects you on how you show up for yourself, and then it affects your self talk, because inside of your mind you're having all of these conversations that you wanted to, right? You go to a party or you go to a gathering or you meet someone, and then when the conversation is over you come home or you're lying in bed at night or you're in the shower and guess what happens then every single answer goes through your head of what you could have said or what you should have said is this making sense right tell me if this is making sense and you're and you're really like getting this okay so in your head, as an afterthought, hours later, a day later, you are crazy in your mind thinking of everything you should have, you could have, and you're beating yourself up. Because in that moment, you were frozen, you were paralyzed, because your programming of people pleasing has overtaken you, right? And so learning to create boundaries takes time and so try try something light try something light so when someone says you know you want to go to a restaurant or you want to order in or you want to go to a certain movie or you want to watch practice saying no authentically if you really don't want to watch that particular movie or go visit that particular person or eat that particular food try something small by saying no okay some other ideas, I'm going to teach you actually how to say 
No, I have 14 different ways I'm going to teach you how to say no as you build healthy boundaries, as you build, because there are benefits in saying no. The people that you really, really care about and they love you and they support you, guess what they're going to do? They're going to pay attention. They're going to say, wow, you're doing something amazing here. You are learning something new and this is wonderful, right? Other people are not going to respect you. Other people are going to be like, what's wrong with you? And they're going to judge. It is your job to watch and not to take things personally, right? Setting boundaries and saying no might feel uncomfortable at first. I know it did with me and I practiced in the mirror for years before I started learning how to say no, right? And the most surprising lesson is that people, you will start attracting new people that actually like boundaries. You will start attracting people who actually also learn to say no. You will start attracting people that have this healthy relationship with people in their life. And now you're like, oh my God, I didn't even know this existed, right? And so I'm going to show you 14 different ways to say no, and you can just type them in the comments, okay? And then we're going to we're gonna pick uh, a poll after to see which were your favorites, okay? I'm just going to make sure, I'm going to switch to a different, so I can, I know that we are still live. Okay, awesome. So here are 14 different ways that you could say no, right? So no is a complete sentence. No, thank you, or no, thank you, I won't be able to do it. That's it. That's it. You just say that, no apology necessary, and then zip it up. Okay, that's the first way. No, no, thank you. No, I won't be able to do it. And then you just have to do everything you can in your power to just don't say another word. <laughs> okay, don't say another word. Number two, you can be vague but firm. So something like this. Thank you for asking me, but that is not going to work for me. Okay, thank you for asking me, but that is not going to work for me. That's number two. Number three is a referral or a delegation. So I won't be able to, but why don't you ask Joe? I bet he'll be able to, okay? I won't be able to, but why don't you ask Joe? I bet he'll be able to, okay? Number three, last minute boundary. Here's what that looks like. I cannot add anything onto my calendar this month, this month. But the next time you're planning to go move, or that there's a blank here. Next time you're planning to go to the movies, next time you're planning to go visit someone, next time you're planning to take on this project, let me know as soon as you can. I would love to go with you. I would love to do this with you, okay? Last minute boundary. Let me say that one more time. I can't add anything onto my calendar this month, but the next time you're planning to fill in the blank, let me know. I would love to support you and be there for you. Okay, number five. Number five is, it's not personal. Here we go. Thank you for thinking of me. But I am not doing any interviews this quarter while I'm focusing on starting my new project. Okay, you just fill it in. Thank you for thinking of me, but I'm not doing any blank right now or this quarter as I'm focusing on my new project, my new body, my new family, my new business. Okay, awesome. Number six showing gratitude. And here is how you answer that. I'm so touched that you thought of me and I really appreciate your enthusiasm and support. I'm very sorry. I won't be able to help you out this time. How cool is that? Okay. 
That's number six, showing gratitude. I will repeat it. I'm so touched that you thought of me. And I really appreciate your enthusiasm and support. I'm sorry I won't be able to help you out this time. Okay, are you loving this? I know these helped me so much to shift from always saying yes to creating boundaries. Here is number seven. We are almost halfway through a list. the, the list. It's not whether, but when. And here is how you say it. I would like to, but I'm unavailable until August. Could you ask me again closer to that time? Okay, so I'm going to give you two examples in this one. So here's the first example. I would like to, but I'm unavailable until, pick a month, pick a day, pick a time. Could you ask me closer to that time? Or you can say it this way. None of those dates work for me, but I would love to see you send me more dates. Okay. None of those dates work for me, but I would love to see you send me more dates. Number eight is being gracious. I truly appreciate your asking, but my time is already committed. Okay. Number eight, I truly appreciate your asking but my time is already committed. Number nine, the word of mouth is the best recommendation. And here is how it goes. I won't be able to, but let me recommend someone to you who would be able to help you. Okay, number nine, word of mouth is the best recommendation. I won't be able to, but let me recommend someone to you who will be able to help you. Okay, I'm checking my notes so because I've got all this written down for you. Number 10, someone else asked first slash family. So this is how you can say no. I already told my partner, therapist, coach, fill in the blank. I already told my fill in the blank, partner, therapist, coach, husband, child, etc. that I would not be taking on more at this time. I am working to create a more balanced life, right? So how do you do that? You say, I already told my blank family member, friend, put it in there, that I would not be taking on any more at this time. I'm working to create a more balanced life. Another way you could say that when someone else asks first or family, you could say, that is the day of my son's sports event or my daughter's ballet recital, right? I would never, and I never miss those, right? That is the day of, fill in the blank, my child's appointment, my child's this, and I never miss those, okay? Awesome. Number 11, we got like four more to go here. Number 11 is about knowing thyself. So how do you say that? You say, no. But here is what I can do. And then you limit to the commitment of what works for you. So, for example, someone wants you to help them pack up their whole house and move. And you're like, no, but here's what I can do. I can give you this much time. Or they want you to cook like a five course meal. And you can say, no, but this is what I can do. I can make the dessert or I can order a dessert and send it to you. Or I can bring a flower arrangement or I can order something. Okay. Number 12, time to assess. This is one of my favorite ones, and it's a go-to for me. If I forget all of the other ones, I use this one. This is it. Let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. That's it, right? So a lot of times, as people please, is we, wanna, we, we get caught up in the situation, and then fear shows up. And the let me think about it is taking a pause. And then you get to stop, go home, think about it, call them, text them, email them, whatever, right? That's number 12, time to assess. So let me think about it and I'll get back to you, which gives you time to bring down your energy, bring down your cortisol levels, breathe and exhale, and then 
you can give them a proper answer, okay? Number 13 is give others a chance. So what does this look like? You can say this, you know, I feel like the accounting department is always organizing the office fundraiser, the office parties. Let's ask the marketing department to help this year, okay? Or, you know, I feel that Julie always does all of this. Why don't we ask Michael to come in and participate and help out a bit, okay? Number 14 is the pressure valve. The pressure valve is you got to use, learn a safety word. What is a safety word? So for example, a safety word could be I'm maxed out. I am completely maxed out or I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the bandwidth. Find a safety word that you can use inside of you, right? And so anytime somebody asks you something, you can say like, I am maxed out. I don't have the bandwidth right? I am taking care of myself and I am completely maxed out. So those are the 14 different ways where you can learn how to say no and teach yourself how to say no without feeling guilty because it's all about the practice, the practice, right? So you want to be able to practice all of these because what people pleasing does, it hides the real you, right? As long as I was people pleasing, guess what? Nobody really knew who I was. In fact, funny thing is, I didn't know who I was. I didn't take time to learn about me. I didn't take time to learn about my values. I didn't take time to be able to learn what I liked, right? Every time we say yes to everything, it's easy to lose our needs. It's easy to learn, lose who we are. And every time we do that, guess what? We get a little bit closer to burnout. So not having boundaries creates burnout. And what I want to do for next week on the Million Star Show, if you guys like this topic, I'm going to bring you more on the burnout and the people, you know, I'm going to share with you different uh, overachiever models and how we push ourselves. And if that's interesting to you, you got to show up here next week. OK, so what we're going to do right now, tell me which one was your favorite? Which one is that one that just stands out for you where you say, wow, I am going to practice this one for the next week? I'm going to practice this one, right? And so if you like this about, you know, really learning about burnout and people pleasing and how it affects your life, your body, your business, next week we're going to talk about burnout and the personalities of burnout. Yes, we all have different personalities on how we get to burnout, whether you're an overachiever or a procrastinator or a perfectionist. We're going to bring that to you. I'm going to do research this week and I'm going to educate you on that. So what was your biggest takeaway? What did you love about this? And which one is the one that you are going to practice? Practice on the people around you. Practice on your colleagues, your clients. Practice on people. To you're going to relearn. You are going to relearn how to teach other people how to train you as you put this in place and you start practicing how to say no without feeling guilty, right? How to say no and be able to create boundaries for you where you are solid and you are taking steps. Ah, Jacqueline says her favorite one is let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Yes, I love that one. I love that one because it gives, you know, it, it gave me time to just stop and say, you know, I'm going to think about it, right? So not saying yes all the time. I love that. It is really, really powerful. Yeah, and you can use it all the time. All the time, everywhere, practice saying, you know, let me think about it. I'll get back to you. Let me think about it because, you know, I want to give myself that time. 
And now the person is going to be like, okay, Nadia says uh, she's going to practice. I am completely maxed out right now. That's fantastic. Yeah. Right. So you, you don't take on more on your plate because what ends up happening with good, kind, empathetic women is that you don't actually uh, remove things off your plate. You change your plate into a platter. And now you have a platter and you have a tray and you keep on adding more to it. And the idea is not. The idea is to change your plate to a smaller plate. Shakira likes the one. Let me think about it and get back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really phenomenal. And practice it in the mirror. Whether you're saying, let me think about it and get back to you, or I'm completely maxed out right now. Every time there's a request coming in, practice that one so it becomes part of your muscle memory. It becomes part of something where you say, that's just what I'm going to do. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you, right? Let me think about it. And so no one is going to feel offended and you get to think about it for as long as you want until the time comes for you to make a decision. And that's okay. There is no rule to say, when the request shows up, I got to say yes right away. And that is just something that we learned ourselves and we took on ourselves. Okay. And the more and more time that I say I've spent time with my coaches and multimillion dollar people, I realize every time they said no, they got richer. Every time they said no, their wealth grew. Okay. Nadia says, I said no twice this week. What? That's absolutely fantastic. Good for you. Good for you, Nadia. That is an accomplishment. I love that. I love that. So my darlings, my queens, my coaches, soulful women, and spiritual female women that are called to make a difference. That's what I got for you. I will see you next week where we're going to talk about the personalities of burnout. And it's going to be really, really fantastic. Tag your friends, bring your friends over here. And we're also going to start a competition next week. I love competitions. I love giving away things. I love when you win things. So it's time for another competition. And we're going to tell you all the details. So if this is the first time you're watching the Million Star Show, I love you. If you're watching this on replay, let me know. And let me know what is your favorite one and what are you going to use. Talk to you later. Have an awesome day. Million Stars Queens, I will meet you on Office Hours. Bye for now.